Okay, so let's get ourselves started. Um, first of all, welcome everyone to the second in our Moving Faster with Hive webinar series. I'm Dean and I'll be with you for the next wee while focusing on working with clients in Hive. And clients are core to all of our businesses, but how effective are we uh, at working with them closely and also how effective are our processes to allow us to work alongside our clients day to day. In this webinar, we're going to look at four critical touch points when working with clients. And those are going to be initiating work and where we begin, sharing progress, and then reviewing our work. So, so getting approval on key deliverables and running proactive meetings. And let's challenge ourselves here and be a bit bold and ask, is, is the status meeting potentially dead? Now, before we move into the content, just a little bit about me. And I've been in the delivery and business operations change management for global client facing media, digital creative and data organizations for, for quite a while now. But my role at Hive after joining the business is to partner with the enterprise clients in designing, supporting their Hive implementation and, and ultimately driving adoption. And I do love a good Gantt view. And you're going to see that today along with Hive Notes, which is a favorite feature. And other things I enjoy when I'm working with clients is helping document our standard operating procedures and leveraging tools such as a cross-functional flow diagram. And those are key things that we use for communication. And throughout our session, here's some rules of play for today. So you're going to have questions. And if you have a question, do submit them in chat. There's a team supporting me from the Hive customer success team and, and they will address those, but we will also uh, look to answer some questions at the end if we have time. Can I have a copy of this deck? Of course you can. And we will share this after the webinar ends today. If you'd like more information, by all means, visit help.hive.com and you can access our articles, use cases and workflows there. And finally, for those of you on the call today who are Hive users and have access to the platform and you need help, reach out with the blue question mark and send us a message. So let's begin. When managing clients, we tend to find we need to build a separate client update layer. And this sits in between the actual work getting done and, and the client. This results in extra time for project managers, producers, client service teams to keep this communication in sync with the actual project plans. And let's call this the invisible work of managing clients or from an operational standpoint, these are the hours that we potentially don't charge for in our uh, statements of work that cost our margins and bottom lines. Now this session is a mix of our advice, our experience where we can workshop a framework for how we can work better with our clients. And we're gonna break all of that down into these four pillars. Work initiation and how do we begin? Progress reporting. How do we see progress and share that? Work review. So how do we send items for review? And proactive meetings. When do we meet? What do we discuss? And the first one we're going to look at is work initiation. So how do we begin? So what are our experiences of work initiation as is today? And familiar challenges and issues I hear over and over again are briefing and initiation is non-standard. It's missing information, it's inconsistent. Where we're leveraging email here, things can live deep in inboxes, which we have to dig to find. And also we have very long email threads, which are just not simple or straightforward. And the recreation of plans and projects, the rework that has become the normal for us on the, based on this non-standard briefing and initiation we receive. And my point of view here is that it's, it's absolutely fine for teams to be to expect to be briefed on their own terms to enable them to execute the essential work and, and save themselves some time. And I don't think we should be afraid to ask our clients 
to provide structure when sending us requests. We see the status quo continuing here and when we don't think about it, it becomes an issue when something escalates. And only then when we have to take action, do we start to identify those key critical points throughout our initiation process. Now, how do we collect information and initiate work and set up our structure to get to work faster? How do we move from as is with emails, version control issues, documents flying around into the world where we want to be? And we want to be where there's some automation, where there's a clear way of working and we can be integrated in one place. And that leads me into Hive and, and how we can set up work initiation. And by looking at three of our features here, so thinking of Hive Forms, where information is submitted, it goes directly to the work queue. That allows us to populate projects and actions with templates, which allow us to quickly kick off work with established action and task patterns. And the third here is integrating Hive Mail, which leaves the possibility open that where we do have those exceptional situations where someone is unable to follow our form or our process, that we can still grab that from a, a hive mail and that can save the day and bring that information into our project. And the process we're gonna look at now is we're gonna think about a standardized form which is submitted. It's going to launch a project in Hive from a template. This supports us with managing uh, our project, allowing for adjustments and being flexible as we move. And finally, connecting to Hive Mail to manage those exceptions and thinking of our three pain points. This therefore means we no longer have information stuck in inboxes. Our briefs support our work because we design and control our forms. They always contain the information necessary for us to start work and we're proactively here targeting costly rework with a better brief up front and supporting our exceptions in Hive Mail. Now I'm going to jump over into Hive and we're going to look at a form submission which will create a project from a template. So here I am here and you'll see my Hive platform and what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit this form into Hive which will allow me to build my project. So project initiation. Let's give the campaign a name, Busy Bee. And I have an expected go live date, and I'm going to set this to next month. And I'm also going to attach a file for reference. And here we are, I'm going to grab this contract example here. And that's going to attach that to my project as I go live. And let's click submit. Now Hive Forms can be supplied externally to your clients with a URL. And they can also be completed in platform. And this is the URL version that you're looking at here. Now I'm gonna come back over to my platform and we're going to see that my project has been created here. And it lives under a parent project where I want to organize my structure in Hive. And you'll see that I have the expected go live date along with the project ID. And by opening up this project, we can see that I have my tasks all ready to go. And within this template, I've pre-assigned specific things to my project members to make sure that they uh, get notified as soon as the project is live. Okay. Now our second pillar we're going to visit is progress reporting. So how do we see this progress with clients? And let's go back to our as is, and what do we hear about progress reporting today? What do clients tell us? The first thing is it's out of date before we start. So if we're reviewing on a Thursday for last week's work, Monday to Wednesday's already happened. That means our reporting information isn't real time. Clients are always waiting for things to be shared. And this is where we're emailing documents around, copying in shared drive links, and making sure that we've got the correct version that we want to share with our clients. And finally, various formats. And we all know and respect that 
our clients will want to pass information on internally. Where we have multiple formats, this is not useful for passing information on and we want to keep things consistent. But from my own point of view, I truly believe that when real-time information exists, we should start using it and we should start using it with purpose to keep our clients updated with our progress. Otherwise, we're just wasting our own time. We need to be bold and bring the client into our work. We talk about partnering with clients. So let's allow them to be in our work with us and let's work smarter to connect them to key touch points and milestones throughout our projects and campaigns and whatever type of work we're working on. So this brings me to the, the th three examples of Hive features that we can use. And when sharing progress, Hive offer, offers us the opportunity to define a good standard operating procedure. I did tell you I would get this in here. And we're gonna look at three levels of engaging clients in our work by firstly, sharing a public URL, which allows us to let our clients see our live Gantt in real time. We're going to look at external users and collaborating with those outside of our organizations, welcoming them into our projects with modes of control. And then level three in itself would allow us to bring our clients as full access project members. And do consider that full access for your clients within your workflow will allow them to truly collaborate day to day. And that may feel like a leap too far for some of you at this point. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at inviting an external user into our project and controlling what they see. And let's remind ourselves that these are real-time updates. And let's also understand that with that user, we control what they can see. We make sure that they receive the same notifications our project members do as well. So let's hop back over to our platform Let's visit inviting an external user and let's share some work with them. Okay, so now back to my project, I'm going to open the one we created from our templates. And I'm going to invite an external user to this project. And I can do that by just starting to type their email address or their name. And you can see here, I have myself set up as an external user. I'm going to invite the member uh, and there we have it. So this external user now has access to this project. The second step here is where we do want to control what this user can see. I'm going to come to my more menu and come to edit. And this is where my project options are. And within the action card settings, you'll see hide all actions from external users until they're made visible. So this is where you opt your external user into specific action cards in Hive. And I'm just gonna to toggle that on now and save my changes. Now I'm gonna quickly hop over to an existing project where I've set this up for us. And when I come in to the action card in this project, you're going to see visible to external users is at the top of the action card. And this is where you toggle this on. So this card is visible to this external user. But if I come down into my project and let's pick the develop name action, you'll notice that it's toggled off. So this is not visible to that external user. So this is what I can see as an active project member. And now let's look at what my external user can see. And this is my external user Hive account. And you'll note that there's only key milestones which have been enabled for this user and also one particular task about qualitative research. And through exercising that control, we can make sure that our clients have a, a beneficial and satisfactory experience when working within our projects, but also it's obvious and easy as to what we want them to focus on. Now I'm going to, on behalf of this external user, Mark these two tasks complete, because we're going to need them when we come to our fourth pillar later today. All right, now let's come back to our presentation. And the next pillar we're going to look at is the work review. And when we think about how do we send items for review? 
and thinking about when we need our clients to review and approve work. There's lots of challenges here. I fully understand and empathize with this. Now we, we, we hear from clients as is today, lost documentation, it's buried in email. We have access issues. We sent it to an individual that, that's potentially not available at that time. And we need to make sure we get it to the right person who can respond in the right time frame. We also suffer version control difficulties where we see, I potentially have report number three, you have report number four, client actually needs number four and I don't have it. So version control is riddled through work review when we're sending and emailing documents around. And finally, tracking stages and steps in approval proves impossible in some instances because we're looking at lots of projects, lots of approval rounds. If we're proofing uh, visual assets, especially or digital assets, then we need to keep track of those. And this can be challenging for me. In all honesty, I find this clunky. Review processes with clients just wastes more time and money, and it creates needless frustration that I, I think we can all live without. And Hive can support this work review process, again, thinking about different levels of collaboration. And we can look towards our reviewing work with our proofing, where we share proofs for review with project members internally. We can send them externally to the organization via an email. We can also think about approvals where we can request approval from an external project member as much as a, a project member within our own organization. And one additional thing to think about for external project members is where you have them invited to multiple projects that live within a parent and child hierarchy. We can encourage them to review the parent project, but also visit the project overview pages for each project. This means with one click, they can have access to all the attachments and the activity that's going on within that project. So let's take a look at one of these workflows. And the one we're going to visit is we're going to have a proof ready for review. We're then gonna upload that into Hive and request approval from a third party. So this is someone external to our platform and to our projects. We're then going to walk through approving that piece and, and asking for changes and confirming that it's good to go. Okay, so let's jump back into our platform here. And here's my Buzzy Bee project. And the package for client review is what I'm ready to share for approval. So I'm gonna open up my action card and come to the approvals app. Now, the first thing I'd like to do here is I'd like to attach my proof. So I'm gonna click add proof and I'm gonna grab Buzzy Bee Hive mascot from my desktop. And as that attaches, something we want to consider is when we receive approval or requested changes for our proofs, we may want to apply a certain level of automation so that if the uh, if changes are requested, the task moves to unstarted status. And if the changes are approved, then we can complete this task and move forward. So let's do that when we request approval. So I'm going to request my approval here and we're going to walk through a very simple uh, two stage approval. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the due date for this approval and I'm going to make that today. I'm also going to add my external approver and that's going to happen via email. So I'm just going to type in my email. Let me check I've spelled that right. Mail in a .com. Okay, great. So I'm going to add that external user. And once I've done so, let's adjust my statuses. So once I have my changes requested, I'm going to push that back to in progress. And if my work is review, I'm gonna move this to client review. Now I'm ready, I've added my external user. I've set my time. I've added my proof ready to go. And now I'm gonna click request approval. And you'll see here that it's awaiting approval. 
So let's hop to the inbox and I'll show you that approval email. That doesn't seem to want to work for me. So let me just try that again. Let me come back and welcome to editing and approval stage. There we go. I'm going to add. Okay. I'm going to remove this one. There we go. And let's request approval again. Wonderful. Now into our mailbox. Thank you for your patience. But here we have my new approval request. I'm going to click that open and it's going to offer your client, your external individual, the opportunity to access that proof. And this is done slickly into their inbox and it's sent immediately as well, because we're very aware that when requesting approval for documentation and proofs, it needs to be done immediately. And again, back to our real time discussion in progress updates. So I'm going to click that open and it's going to take me to my Hive proofing tool. And you'll see here that the proof is visible for review. We can annotate shapes and insert. Now we're not gonna talk about the proofing tool in great detail just now, but if you have questions, do reach out and, and also go to help.hive.com and read our articles. But for this little buzzy bee right now, I'm gonna request a change in this flow. So I'm going to proceed, actually, let me leave a comment first. Where is his computer? Okay, so I'm going to save that here. And then I'm going to request changes. And that will now come through. And you'll see here on my action card in round one that we have changes requested. So let's jump forward and say I've, I've made my changes to this proof. And I'm now ready to add my second version and let's just open him up here and you'll see i've got a notification that there was an annotation on that proof then so i've added my version two that looks like the wrong one let me try again perfect Let me try again. Okay, so here we have our Buzzy Bee mascot with our computer and he is just uploading now. And you'll see here that we have the previous version ready for comparison. Now I'm gonna add a stage and let's go back to our approver. to add that user. Let's set our due date again. And again, let's just put our status to client review if approved. So now this is waiting for approval. I'll come back to my inbox. So here I am as my external approver and let's go to this request. And from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm it. And I've taken my external user screen away because I just want to show you how fast this moves. So I'm just going to approve. And you'll see that that is now approved. I have my notification and my status has changed to client review. 
And throughout this action card, we can see this trail of our edits through our stages. So when we're sharing our work with our clients, we can track it, we can report on it, we can manage our version controls, we can request approval and proofs from project members, external project members, as you've seen us invite in our sharing progress, and also from entirely external individuals to our organization as well. And so that is our, our proofing. Great. Now let's get back to our working with clients and let's move on to our fourth pillar here. And when we're thinking about working with clients and our proactive meetings, what, what is happening now? This is something I'm quite passionate about and because meetings are a big part of the work we do with all clients. And what we find as is, is the things I hear today are that we spend a lot of time looking back at what was done, not taking action on what's next. We feel like we're wasting time updating those who didn't attend or who were unable to attend. Lots of copy and pasting into emails and spreadsheets and all sorts of things. And again, that's, that's just taking up key time to get to the work at hand. And these things can be resource drains for an organization. I'm not sure the last time any of you on this call looked at your last weekly department team status meeting and added up the billable cost of having all of those individuals in the room at the same time for a week, and then multiply that by the year and then equate that to how much time that could have been on billable work. And in my point of view here is that this is costly. My experience tells me that it's a resource drain. And when meetings don't feel valuable and attendance starts to suffer, this causes more work for those who are attending and who do need to review the work and talk about what's next. We waste a lot of time updating people following a meeting. And in some instances, I have heard of having a meeting before the meeting to talk about it and then having a meeting after to wash up after the meeting. And this means that we are not spending enough time taking action. So let's be, let's be brave and get rid of the copy and paste of notes following meetings. And I'm, I'm keen to start a revolution here. And if we think about, is the status meeting dead? So let's not look back, let's look forward. We need to understand what benefit do meetings bring to us and our client relationships and our client management. And let's start looking forward instead of looking back. And with proactive meetings in Hive, today starting now, I'm gonna challenge you to start doing it better. And here's how Hive can help. With Hive Notes, we can share notes, take notes, assign actions, connect to our calendar events and leave comments. And we can also leverage those alongside recurring actions where we can manage our timeline better, receiving reminders about certain um, uh, invites and meetings, but also actually, do we need to have the meeting? Can we just set a recurring action for people to update their tasks in our note? And we can share that live and collaborate. And I did mention parent project reporting, where if we build a structure in Hive allowing our external workspace members, our clients, into our projects, they can self-serve progress information. They can go and look and see where tasks are. And like we know, we, we've experienced controlling the tasks that they see in the project. So they're only going to see what you want them to see. And the workflow we're going to look at just now is we're going to create a hive note and we're going to connect that to a meeting. We're going to allow ourselves to share that with the attendees and we're going to see some up to minute updates, assignments and actions in real time as we go. And that means that our update is ready for our next meeting uh, when we do need to meet and all the tasks are visible. So what we're going to do now is we're going to join a stand up. And let's remember, stand-ups are short, they're frequent, and they're tactical. So they focus on what people are actively doing. And I'm going to come back to the platform where some of our client service team are working alongside me in my Buzzy Bee project. And the first thing I'm going to do with my Buzzy Bee project is I'm going to go to my note. And you'll find notes on the left-hand navigation over here. 
but you'll also find them in the overview page for each project. And that's how I'm gonna access my note today. So here's my overview page and you'll see our status and project activity ready to be reviewed. And I'm gonna open up my stand-up note. Now, what you can see is I've connected this to my calendar invite, and this was last week's work. And since last week in our second pillar today, my client has marked what they've worked on complete for me. And I can see this here. We can also see the focus for the team in the coming week and any obstacles that we want to talk about. And this is built from one of our notes templates that's available up here in our more menu. So you can use these templates to structure your notes. But let's go ahead now and let's click create today's stand up meeting. So I'm gonna click add meeting and it's gonna prepare my next entry. And once I've created that, I'm gonna share this with the attendees to my meeting. And here's my attendees and there's also my external user. And I have a team in Hive created for my team. So it's going to share there as well. I'm just gonna add that now. So all of my team members can have full access to my note. And here you'll see them all live up here. And now that we've got this note open, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the focus from last week into what did you work on this week? And that's ready for my team to update. And when we think about updating these, we'll see that these two items themselves are going to be marked complete. Uh, this item is going to be marked complete. And we're also going to notice that Erin has added me a comment to remind me that Erin uh, is out on PTO. Good to know. So I can jump back to my project and manage my timelines. And something else to bring your attention to is here. Gina's updated this day. And this will cascade live back into the project. So the date for this task has changed. And what I'd really like to see is I'd really like to understand potentially why that has changed. So let's think about what our focus is now for our team. And while we're thinking about the things the team are working on, we're going to see the team are adding their actions now that they're working on for me live. And I would suggest that this can be done in preparation for your stand-up meeting or for your review. But as this is a shared note, potentially we don't need to get in a room or get on a Zoom call to see what's going on. But we've got these actions coming live in here. Okay. What we're also noting is that they're moving from unstarted to in progress as well. And let's reflect back on Gina changing the date here from August the 5th to the 10th. And I'd really like Gina to help me understand potentially why that's happening. And let's see, and there we go, here's Gina. And I can see Gina adding a note that the client is on vacation. So we're therefore pushing this back. Now, this is happening live as we're talking. Our notes are fully collaborative. And let's imagine sitting in our meeting with our project members and we ask the question, does anybody have anything else they need to discuss? You'll be familiar with the AOB at the bottom of any agenda. I don't see any reason why people can't be adding to that section while we're meeting or before. I don't see why I would need to be asking people throughout that meeting. So let's encourage a change in behavior. And let's ask our project members to do this while we're working throughout our project and also when we come together to review work. Now, we've seen this obstacle here that the client is on holiday in Bermuda, lucky client. Now I'm gonna add an action to my project for Gina to remind me that uh, they've circled back on the deadline and to update team. So I want to reconfirm the uh, brand asset deadline. Okay. And what I can do with a Hive note live in my project is let's make it an action. You can see by opening our toolbox, clicking the small tick, I can make it an action. It's already assigned to my project and I'm going to assign it to Gina. I'm also going to give it a date because I'd like to know by Friday 
what's happening with this task. And this task here now will be present within our project. So like I've said, no more copying and pasting to furnish tasks and actions. No more sending these around to confirm who's assigned. You can do it live in the meeting as you work. And the final thing I can do for those people who are unavailable or could not attend, I can very easily come to my note, click email, and I can send it out. So you'll see here that here's the, the tasks and actions that were reviewed. Here's the information we checked and I can send it out to my email. That will allow everyone to view our status. Very handy for leadership updates. Okay, so I'll close that down. And that's me ready with my note for my next stand-up. And you'll notice when I opened today's note, it set itself to today's meeting and aligned itself. Okay, perfect. Great. So while we've finished with our, our four pillars of initiating work, sharing progress and bringing clients into our work and partnering, reviewing those work and understanding, sharing, proving and approvals, and also running proactive meetings. I just want to say a final reminder that if you'd like more information, do go to help.hive.com. So you'll see our articles there. And for the Hive users on our call right now, feel free, come and click our blue question mark and send us a message. For those who are new to Hive and you'd like a demo, and this is the first time you've seen the platform meeting myself and the team, visit hive.com and get in touch with us and we can certainly make those arrangements. Now we have a few moments. Um, so I'm going to offer up to uh, any questions that we may have had. So I'll give it one second. And if we don't have any, I will close us out for today.